Welcome to the DPO WooCommerce instruction video. The first thing you're going to do is head over to the official GitHub repository and go to DPO WooCommerce. There you're going to click on the releases page and then download the latest release. It's version 1.0.14 at the time of the recording, but your version may be even more recent. Next thing you're going to extract the zip file and then open up the folder that is extracted. Here you'll see the folder as it has been extracted. We have the instructions and we have the plugin. We open up the instructions, you'll see that there is a description, the installation instructions and the frequently asked questions. It'll be good to read through all of this. Let's focus on the installation, which is the purpose of this video. Firstly, you're going to open up your WordPress site and log in. Next, you're going to go to Plugins, Add New. You're going to click on Upload Plugin and then Choose File. You're going to navigate to the folder that has your plugin. This will be the folder we extracted earlier from the zip that you downloaded. Next, you're going to click Install Now. Finally, you're going to click Activate Plugin. Now, we're going to configure the plugin. You're going to go to WooCommerce, Settings. Then you're going to go to Payments. Then you're going to click on DPO Group. Now, you're going to enter in your company token your default service type. If you're not sure about your default service type, you can get a list of service types for your industry from the DPO support team. You're going to type the DPO group URL. The default at this point is secure.3gdirectpay.com, but this will be updated from time to time. If you have a custom DPO group URL, then you will receive this from the DPO support team. The DPO pay URL is next. The default is pay.php, but this may change from time to time. You're going to select your PTL type. This could be hours or minutes. You're going to select the PTL, which is optional. This will be the number of hours or minutes required for the payment time. So maybe a good value might be setting minutes and maybe putting in 15 minutes or five minutes. It depends on your industry. Next, you're going to select the successful order status. Completed is generally what's done, but you might want it as processing. That's also perfectly fine. You should select on hold if you don't want your stock to be reduced automatically. So it depends on your workflow. Next, you can add order meter to service. So this will be if you want to add additional order meter. This is an advanced option. You don't usually have to worry about it unless you have a particular workflow and you've been so instructed by the DPO support team. And then you click Save Changes. And that's all there is to it for the Payments page. There's another step which you might need to look at if your products are in multiple service types. In this case, we're going to open up a product. We're going to select, in this case, just a V-neck t-shirt. We're going to scroll down until we find DPO service type. And here we're going to enter the service type. This number you will get from the DPO support team. I've entered 39 already. I could say 1234 was my default. 1235 will be my override. So if this value is blank, then the default service type will be used across the store. But if you have multiple service types, each product will pick up their service type from this value here. DPO will now be configured as a payment gateway on the checkout.